Moonraker Micro CB Radio. First look at on air test versus the PNI Escort HP7120. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 7V0 if you catch me on 11 meters, and PMR446. So, got a CB radio to look at today. It's another blessed event. So, this one is the Moonraker Micro. The smallest and cheapest CB radio I think I've seen in a while, although this one here, if it doesn't get tangled with everything, is a PNI Escort HP7120, which is small and compact. You'll have seen a video on this previously already, but if not, I'll pop a link up at the top of the display so you can have a look at that one. So this comes with um, owner's manual, which has the different frequencies for the different countries on the back, including the UK ones. And just a brief look at where everything is and yeah, it does have instructions on how to change the band. So we'll need to obviously deal with that. And we'll come to it. Little thing that says, thank you for buying our product, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> The radio itself with a hardwired power lead, but I've got nothing to connect that to, so I'm going to have to um, uh, pop um, uh, a cigarette lighter plug on that. It's wrapped in that horrible crinkly plastic that I don't like very much. There we go. So this is the CB radio. And let's compare it to the size of the PNI. You could say they were quite similarly sized, although I think the PNI is slightly deeper. Hmm. So it's got a modular microphone connector on it. I really do not like those very much. And that's the last item in the box, apart from the br mounting bracket, is this really dinky little microphone, also in that crinkly plastic, which I don't like. So I'm just going to get rid of the crinkly plastic. So that's this little microphone here with a modular type connector on it. Now if you're familiar with computer networking you'll know what that is. Just don't plug it into your computer. <laughs> Trust me that's not a good idea. So I'll plug that into the front of the radio and put this protective boot over it if we can. Makes it look nice and tidy. Now, I'm looking at the front of this, we've got on-off, which was on actually, it was on at full, emergency, RF, gain, squelch, AM, FM, smallish speaker there, CSO239, heat sink, which might allude to some naughtiness in there, I don't know. So, I'm not going to even open it up, the last item in... In the box is screw, spare fuse, and the mounting bracket and other hardware for that. So, let's remove the box. This just came to me today. It was delivered yesterday, Saturday, except I wasn't available to take the delivery. And, you know, the postman knocked on the door, allegedly. Not sure whether he actually bothered to ring the doorbell or not, because I certainly didn't hear the doorbell and I didn't hear anyone knock, so there we go. Less said about that, the better. So I need to put a connector on the end of that power lead because, well, there isn't a connector on it. So I'm going to um, uh, go off camera and do that now and, and we should be good. I'll be putting a car cigarette lighter plug on it, which I bought from Halfords yesterday specifically for the purpose. So I will return once I've done that and I'll bring the camera in and we'll power this up from my bench power supply. Okay, so I've got the radio stood on top of the Zetagi meter. The important part isn't that visible because of the microphone lead, so I'll just move that out the way. So it's now visible. I'm not sure how visible that is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it, the plug I've just fitted, which is this one, I believe, into the cigarette lighter socket type socket on the power supply. So far, so good. 
Let's see. Okay. So it started up in German mode. Not what we want to do. So I now need to figure out how to put that into the correct mode and we'll go through this step, these steps together. Now let's see what the manual says. It says to change band, power up the radio while pressing the AF button. Let's see if that's right. So AF on. It's now flashing. What do we do next? The up down buttons to select the desired band. The up down buttons are on the microphone. Okay, UK. Once selected, turn the radio off and back on again. We on UK? We jolly well are. Now, that doesn't sound really nice, does it? There we go. 1.1 seems to, to do that. So are we in the UK set of channels or the EU set of channels? Uh, that's, yes, that's the EU set of channels and that's the UK set of channels. So what I'm going to do, go to channel 20. So it's about the centre of the UK band. That's where most people are probably going to be using this. And um, I'll just put the focus down onto the taggy meter just down there. And let's see. At 13.8 volts, the taggy meter says. Hmm. Hmm. About a watt, apparently. That's not ideal. Check we are in the watt setting first. So we're in the 10 watt scale. We are in the watt setting. Yeah, apparently it's only putting out a watt, so I wonder if that's a power setting. Hmm. Yeah, so apparently it's only putting out a watt at the moment. According to my Zetagi meter. Yeah. Put it into the EU mode. A little bit over a watt there on my 13.8 volt supply. According to the Zetagi meter. Hmm. So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I don't think there's a power adjustment. I'm not going to even look into that. So I'm not sure why that's coming out as low power as it is. So the Zetagi meter is reading one watt. I don't think it's a watt coming out of the back of this. So that's a bit disappointing. But you know. Unless there's something I've missed here. So I'm going to see if there's a com combination of power on modes. Just see if we can put it into higher power mode. That's the RF gain control. Unless this meter's out of calibration again, I don't know. So let's swap it to the capo meter and see what that has to say. Because I think that's even less better than this is a taggy one. Okay, so I've put the capo meter in line. Let's see. Now the capo meter is showing just shy of four watts, apparently. <laughs> Although I think that capo meter says four watts to absolutely everything. So The RF gain is actually turned on at all times. I want to turn that off because it is an attenuator. So I'm going to turn that off. There we go. So that's just a volume control. That's all it does. Squelch, you have to press them and then use the up down on the mic. RF gain, it's the same. Press it and then use the up down on the mic. So if you want to change the RF gain level, change it from. 6 to 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, and then back to 6. And I think that, that just acts like it would on the PNI set, just as an attenuator. Emergency, self-explanatory. Channel 9, channel 19, 
back to where you were. Squelch. In this case of this set, I'm not sure if it does have an auto squelch. That's just a standard squelch settings. It's at 1.1 at the moment. So it drops down in like that. That's the squelch completely off. So it goes from completely off to, there's it go, 28 or 2.8. Let's have it back on because I don't want to be dealing with that right now. Okay, the this radio does do AM, but not whilst in the UK mode. So that's CEPT FM. And that's UK FM. To get it to do AM, as far as I'm aware, what you'd have to do, press and hold that AF button, you have to put it into scan mode, which is helpful. So, in order to use AM on this set in the UK, which you are legally allowed to do, you have to put it into a different band. You can't do it in the UK mode. So... Really, all there is to it, to be honest. It's quite a simple, basic set, small, compact. I don't think it has an auto squelch, unlike um, uh, the PNI, which does. I'm not sure what the audio sounds like. I'm just going to grab a handy monitor receiver. Oh. Channel 20. Okay, so I've got my realistic TRC 1007 here. Let's see, what does it sound like? Oh, a bit loud. Oh, testing 123, 321. 123, 321. Oh, that sounded terrible. That's better now. 123, 321. Bit louder. Interesting effect. <laughs> one, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hmm. There's microphone, it says on the back it's an electric condenser microphone with a 1000 ohm impedance. And it's made in Thailand. If you look at this microphone, it looks similar to some old um, uh, Midland Allen ones, but it isn't. It feels quite light as well, and I don't like that. So that's a look at that radio. So the next thing for me to do is put it on the air and field test it. Now, I'm going to have to um, just do this on the car's aerial. I was going to do it on my, on my T T2LT with the car parked up, but unfortunately things delayed obviously getting this done and you know makes sense for me to um uh, test it just on the car's aerial There's a, there was a bit of a lift on yesterday uh had i not been working that would have been an ideal opportunity to actually test this set but unfortunately i was working so what i'll do is i'll set up a camera in here and receive it on the president grant 2 and it will be compared with the pni when I find the microphone and the power lead for that, so that's what I'm going to compare it with. So this is a Moonraker Micro, cheap, £40 CB radio, very compact, and will fit in very small cars, including mine, although I'm happy with my Thunderpole T3000 because it does the job. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn the power supply off and... And then what I'll do is I'll get this and the PNI in the car and I'll get the base aerial put up and we'll go from there. Okay, so you join me at the Hergill Road end of the old race course in Richmond. It took me a bit longer to get out than planned due to some unforeseen circumstances. I'm not going to say any more about that. So, I've got to... Be Ooh, <laughs> I woke up. I've got the two radios on the passenger seat at the moment. So, um, uh, the usual 
burner brigade are on there, so I'm just going to come off that. So I've just moved that radio to channel 20, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the camera around so you can actually see the radios. I am actually filming this on the Oppo phone. I filmed the first bit on my Samsung Galaxy S8, and I've got a camcorder recording my President Grant 2 back at base. So let's see how this all fares out. Okay, so I'm going to start the baseline audio from my Thunderpole T3000. So this this is the baseline. Testing one two three from the Thunderpole T3000. Setting baseline for test. Okay, so that should have recorded the other end, and I'll pop that into the into the video just after this part, and then I'm just going to set up the the PNI, and then finally. The start of the show, and we'll crack on from there. Testing one two three from Thunderbolt T three thousand. Setting baseline for test. Okay, so I've resumed the video. This is the PNI Escort. So let's see what happens with that. One two three testing. One two three. This is the audio from the PNI Escort HP7120 to compare against the Moonraker Micro. 12345-54321. Okay, so I'll swap the radios back over again for the Moonraker Micro. 123 testing, 123. This is the audio from the PNI Escort HP7120 to compare against the Moonraker Micro. Okay, so now it's the turn of the start of the show this time round. The Moonraker Micro. Brand new to me today. Let's see how it fares with this rather... Hmm, not sure about this microphone. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, three, two, one. Testing audio of Moonraker Micro. There's a bit of feedback on that, so... Drop that off so it doesn't feed back again. And I'll just drop the microphone. Testing one, two, audio of Moonraker Micro. Yeah, I'll put both of those in and let's see if I can raise let's see if I can raise anybody on it. One, two, three, three, two, one. Testing audio of Moonraker Micro. Testing one, two, audio of Moonraker Micro. <laughs> so I'll go into the squelch control and I'll drop the squelch down and see if there's anybody out there. You have to give this couple of seconds to do anything. See if it actually does get out. One nine for a rig check. No, no surprises there. I didn't get anybody. Let's see what else is going on out there today. Let's see what's on the CE band. It'll only be an FM because this radio is FM only. Interesting, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, I think there's a bit of a lift on. But none of the usual lot on the, on the 1 9 are taking advantage of that. Let's have a flip through. Uh, 
Hello, one nine for a copy. Anyone out there? No, I'm not going to get anywhere, am I? I'll do it again, just in case. No one nine for a copy. Anyone out there? Ah, but you know. Okay, in that case, if I'm not going to get anybody on this today, I'll um, uh, go back home and collate the results. And hopefully I'll be able to get that done in a more timely fashion. Okay, so I'm filming this part as soon as I've got back into the house, so I haven't actually listened to the audio yet, but I know you guys have. So, hopefully it'll sound good. I'm looking forward to listening to the audio myself, just to see what it's like. And then I can make up my own mind. So, I'm going to I'm gonna play that back now on the camcorder that I recorded it on and just see how it sounds. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Okay, so what do I make of the Moonraker Micro? So it's nice and small, compact radio. It's a small display, there's no signal meter on it though, which is fine. Signal meter isn't exactly necessary. Small speaker on the underneath. Got this heatsink on the back and there was a hidden H in the display, which may allude to some naughtiness, which makes me think I know what's inside this. So, I think I'm the first YouTube channel to actually look at this, this radio, this Moonraker Micro. Now when I got it, as, as you probably saw, when I first switched it on, it was switched on in German mode. But that was soon rectified and I put it into UK mode. I can't guarantee that everyone sold by Moonraker will be in the German mode, but it's not difficult to change it and you would have seen me do the mode changing procedure there. So compared to the PNI Escort HP7120 and very similar radios, so the connector for the microphone is a modular type on both these radios. That's um, uh, the smaller one. That's the one that's a bit like an Ethernet connection, which you really don't want to be plugging Ethernet cables into that and uh, the microphone into a computer's Ethernet socket because that's just not going to work well. <laughs> it's not going to end well. They both have on off volume control like that and the major functions on push buttons there's four on the front of this and there's six on this because this has the up down on the radio whereas this has the up down on the microphone the microphone has escaped onto the floor which is most annoying <laughs> actually no the microphone hasn't escaped onto the floor it was the pni microphone that was on the floor <laughs> I just saw a microphone cable on the floor and thought it was this. So the up down is these two on this microphone. And um, this does bear resemblance to older Midland microphones, but I'm pretty sure this isn't the same. Feels quite light. I don't really like microphones to feel light. Although I did discover recently that the Thunderpole T series microphones all have a weight in them, which is there to trick you to make you think it's nice and heavy and durable when it in fact probably is far from it. So, this radio, £40 at the time of filming this. The thing I dislike is you can't disconnect this power lead, it's permanently wired. I do have a, another radio like that, that is my Thunderpole T800, that also has a permanently wired power lead, which I don't particularly like very much. I've put this cigarette lighter plug onto it. This I purchased from Halfords just the day before filming this actually. This one's got a red LED in it and it's a 5 amp rated plug which is more than enough for this which would probably draw about an amp or so at most. So as I say I think this is the first YouTube channel to actually look at this radio and this is one I actually bought out my own money. So this one will be going on my collection, which you will probably see a photograph of it there in the thumbnail. So it looks like it could be a good radio and I'll try and get this on, on the air a bit more very, very soon. So it'd be nice to have a play with it. And uh, if you want one of these, if you've got a small car, then they're £40, you can't really go wrong. You just have to pay a bit extra for for an aerial and possibly you'd need to have one of these put on it. But these aren't difficult to fit. 
as long as you know how to solder. If, if not, then if you know someone who can solder one of those on for you, then just ask them and they'll will hopefully do it for you. So, so nice compact CB radio, perfect for the modern car. And no S meter. The only drawback with using this in a modern car is this squelch control. So you've got to press it and then press up down on the microphone. But the channel change is on the microphone, so that's not too much of an issue. So, and it's FM only in the UK mode when it's on the EU set of channels. It does not do AM without reprogramming it for another country. So, it does have an extension speaker socket. You'd be pleased to know that. So if you don't like this small speaker in the bottom, then just plug an extension speaker in and you should be good. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'm the first YouTube channel to look at the Moonraker Micro. I'm pretty sure there's other variants of this radio doing the rounds that have been looked at on other YouTube channels, but I'm pretty sure that I'm the first channel that's actually looked at the Moonraker version. So, that's quite good. So, There's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR446. Now, someone did comment that maybe I shouldn't say all of that at the start of the video. I think I did on this one, I can't remember, I'd have to check it. But, because <laughs> it is a bit long and drawn out. So, you know. So, I don't usually say it often these days, but don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to be notified new videos um, and also if you think my content is worth it and you'd like to become a patron you can do the patreon link is in the description below so so any funds from page patreon go straight back into this channel and would go towards uh, buying in radios to review and uh, any radios that are bought with the uh, with patreon funds I'll offer, offer us prizes to, to official patrons. Because there's no point in me keeping them when you guys have put the money in to actually, actually buy them. So I can offer them off, up as prizes. And I'm just going to have to work out how I'm going to do that. So <laughs> anyway, simply for now, guys. And uh, £40 for this from, from Moonraker. Can't go wrong. I paid about... Three pound something. I can't remember exactly for that plug from Halford. Although I think you can get it from any uh, motor parts places. I wasn't sure about the local ones. That's why I went to Halford's. So, so yeah, the Moonraker Micro, the smallest, cheapest CB you can buy at the moment. Forty pound. No reason not to get into CB now, is there? <laughs> Send three for now, guys.